could AMD finally win? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Sihu in the Doro C300 ergonomic office chair. The Doro C300 is an incredibly well-built and comfortable office chair that provides a great number of benefits not found in other cheap chairs, such as height adjustment on the chair, back and armrest, swivel on the chair and armrest, the ability to recline and lock it in place, and you can even adjust the headrest so you can alleviate neck pain during long gaming or work sessions. Plus, the chair comes with great lumbar support which dynamically adjusts to ensure you get the best comfort at all times and it can hold up to 300 pounds making it a great fit for people of all sizes. I actually used this chair for a week as my main office chair and I was surprised by its comfort plus I could definitely tell it would improve my posture. So if you're in the market for a high quality ergonomic gaming chair and you want to support the channel be sure to click the link in the description below. That's right you heard me correctly AMD is coming out with a whole new graphics car generation and guys it's looking absolutely insane now a lot of this information is going to be coming from the youtube channel red gaming tech i'm sure if you watch my channel you've heard of him before he definitely has some inside sources over there at amd as he's gotten a ton of stuff right especially about radeon in the past what are we talking about well we're talking about rdna4 that's right RDNA 3 hasn't even had its full life cycle completed and we're already talking about the next generation of GPUs. But does this mean they're right around the corner? Well, we'll get to that. But I do want to go into some detail about these graphics cards as yes, a lot of said details were just released. And if we take a look at the first slide here he posted in his video with some preliminary information on RDNA 4, we can see here this is actually some older information and he did actually release some new info which I believe he seems to believe is actually probably more accurate information on this stuff. Now I did want to let you guys take a look at this slide because although it is older info there is a chance this still could be correct and he isn't 100% sure and if this turns out to be correct we're talking about a GPU which I believe he was stating in the past could be around two times the performance of the 7900 XTX, and if it gets anywhere near that, that's absolutely insane. But let's go ahead and take a look at the new information on RDNA 4 to see where exactly it could be landing in terms of performance. So taking a look here at that slide, we can see not final information he's saying, and it could definitely change. Things do change pretty rapidly in the GPU space, but I believe it's gonna be probably pretty close to this. And taking a look here, we can see that he's stating the specs are gonna be 60 WGPs, which if you don't know, stands for work group processors. And it's just the new way that they're essentially arranging their GPU architecture. And we'll get into that a little bit more and break it down so that we can compare it to the current architecture to see just how much more that really is. But just as a quick comparison, the RX 7900 XTX is just 48. So it's a significant increase. Now, he also stating that the boost clock is targeting over three gigahertz. That should be no problem whatsoever for them. It will be using GDDR7, which is absolutely huge as these cards typically scale very, very well with extra memory bandwidth. He's also stating that ray tracing supports BVH processing. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about this, but if you don't know what BVH processing is, just think of it as a more efficient way to do some ray tracing. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get into it. And then apparently there's going to be Salu changes. I don't want to get into that either as I don't want to bore you guys. And then apparently performance targets are up in the air again, but he's saying they're probably going to be a little bit lower than his previously mentioned 2X if these specs do turn out to be true and not the previous stuff he was talking about. And then he apparently is also stating the TDP is going to be somewhere between 350 to 450 watts. Oh, I also forgot to mention in terms of a release date, sounds like he's saying it could be quarter one of 2025 now. That's actually a little bit later than a lot of people are expecting, although I will let you guys know there definitely, definitely is still a chance we could be seeing it sometime in 2024. So things are still a little bit up in the air as for now, but because Nvidia sounds like they're going to be pushing theirs back, don't be surprised if AMD's gets pushed back as well. But Here's hoping that doesn't happen. So guys, there's a lot of information there to go over. So instead of sitting here and rambling on about it, I decided to go ahead and put together a chart to compare it to the Navi 31 GPU and give you guys two examples of what could be happening with the 8900 XTX. And then we'll discuss whether or not AMD can finally beat Nvidia with this new generation of GPUs. So taking a look here, we can see that the ARC 7900 XTX has 48 WGPs. And as I mentioned, the 8900 XTX 
STX is going to have 60. That is a significant increase. We're talking about 15,360 shaders versus the 12,288 on the current 7900 XTX. Again, the boost clock, he said in excess of 3 gigahertz. I'm telling you guys, it's probably going to be 3.2 gigahertz or higher because I've been able to get a 7900 XTX to actually boost to 3.5 gigahertz with not too much effort. Now, it's not necessarily stable, but with the new architecture, that could definitely change. So I think 3.2 gigahertz really shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. 24 gigabytes of GDDR7 running at 32 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus gives you 1,536 gigabytes per second. And that's a substantial increase, and it's definitely going to lead to much higher performance out of these GPUs, especially at higher resolutions. Now, as for the L3 cache, he didn't specify, but it should be somewhere around 120 megabytes if they keep a similar design as to what they're doing on RDNA 3. And in terms of a TDP, probably 395 watts. However, the second version I want to talk to you guys about could be up to 450 watts, and they could be pushing for 3.5 gigahertz plus. Now, option one, I think probably the most likely, but we'll just have to wait and see, would actually get you 98.3 teraflops of compute performance. Now, if we compare that to the 7900 XTX, that only gets 61.4. So that actually gives you a 60% increase. And we're not even talking about IPC. If we throw in, say, 10% IPC, well, now we're talking about around 1.76 times the performance of a 7900 XTX. And option two with the higher clock speeds would actually be 107.5 teraflops. And you compare that to the XTX we have now, that's actually a 75% increase. You add in 10% IPC, and we're talking about 1.925 times the amount of performance as the 7900 XTX. So as you can see, at least in terms of compute performance, the 8900 XTX can indeed get very, very close to two times the amount of performance, which is absolutely insane. Now, of course, if they don't get any IPC gains and maybe the scaling isn't that great, it could certainly fall far short of that. But even if it does fall far short of the 2X number, I think they're going to at the very least be talking about 50 to 60% more performance. And it is likely we could be seeing a little bit more performance than even that, as I just showed you. So honestly, I think what AMD needs to do is target somewhere between 3.2 to 3.5 gigahertz, and they just need to focus in on getting it to scale. Because if they can do that, I actually do think, yes, they can match and maybe even exceed the performance of NVIDIA's next generation GPU. And that's going to be a huge problem for NVIDIA because AMD is making these things a lot more efficiently, which means, yes, they can sell them to you for much, much cheaper. We're talking about sticking to that $999 price point for the flagship GPU and hopefully correcting their prices downwards uh, and getting you lower prices on stuff like an XT and then the 7800 series and stuff like that in their next generation of GPUs, which is going to put a lot of pressure on NVIDIA, who's been severely overpricing their cards for far too long. If they are actually able to pull this off and beat NVIDIA at a lower price, NVIDIA is going to be in for some serious trouble. Now, I do expect NVIDIA will continue to hold a lead in their ray tracing performance, but that gap might be getting narrowed by AMD's next generation GPUs, as it sounds like their ray tracing performance is getting a significant uplift. And with how much better their drivers have been recently, they're starting to become a very seriously good option for PC gamers if you don't want to spend that insane $1,600 plus dollars that NVIDIA is likely going to be charging. So yeah, NVIDIA, you better be bringing your A game next time around because it's sounding like to me so far that the RTX 50 series is unlikely to see too much more than a 50% increase. And although they do hold a lead advantage right now, if AMD comes in with a 75% increase, that's going to diminish that lead significantly. And again, they could even overtake NVIDIA for the first time in a very long time. But hey, that's just one thing. Do you think AMD is going to actually win this time, or do you think they're going to fall short yet again? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. Also, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes content and you want to talk to me directly, please do go check out my Patreon linked in the description below. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.